Motorcycle customization is nothing new. For over 100 years, riders have been modifying their machines to suit their needs and make them their own. Here at Wheels Through Time, we have literally dozens of machines that capture the true essence of motorcycle customization, from cut downs to bobbers, choppers, and more. Today, we're gonna be taking you through some of the most iconic and pivotal machines over those last 100 years. One of my favorite places right at the beginning uh, is where we're gonna start today, the early teens era motor cycles I mean this is where it all started guys so you got hundreds of early manufacturers as that whittled down to just a few companies riders had less to choose from and that's really where the custom comes from is guys wanting to make the motorcycles their own so starting right here teens era motorcycles I mean guys these are motorcycles that are point A to point B transportation literally the whole purpose was to get from here to there the idea of motorcycle sport had hardly even been incorporated yet you know Track racing starts about 1909. On the next 10 years, really pivotal time in motorcycling. Those early days, you had street bikes and you had specially designed race bikes. So these bikes, guys, they made thousands of them. Guys like us could pick them up at any Harley dealer, any Indian dealer, Excelsior dealer. When it came to customizing stuff, you had to do it yourself to make that bike more agile, more nimble, uh, uh, faster, lighter. That was up to you. So. So starting early on guys you've got the teens era 1915 Harley big long wheelbase you know tiller style handlebars big long gas tank you're sitting way up high over top of the bike you know big tall wheels I mean these bikes they're designed they're like the gentleman's motorcycle so designed literally to go from point A to point B it's transportation enter the cut down late 19 teens early 1920s uh, guys start modifying these bikes to make them more nimble more agile now what's been done to this bike I mean, when you compare it to a teens era Harley of the same day I mean check Check the lookout here, guys. Completely different motorcycles made from the same core. Believe it or not, the guy that modified this bike started with the same frame of this bike behind it. So lower the seat, chop the neck a little bit, keep the same rake, shorten up the gas tanks, lighten up the fenders. Uh, guys, the whole design behind this was to make it into a sporting motorcycle. So we're gonna crank this one up it's one of my favorite bikes to ride here at Wheels Through Time. 1916 Harley Davidson J model. It's 61 inches. Oop, been ready to go. Three speed transmission. Just a ton of fun to ride. They're all fun, but when you get on a bike like this, we always say this thing's made for doing donuts. So. So this bike has been through the paces. My pal John and I actually put this thing together out of parts about 10 years ago. And as you guys can see, strip down, just the bare bones of what you actually need. I've had a ton of fun on this motorcycle. I've dirt track raced it, ice raced it. Um, when it comes to early customization, uh, the Harley Davidson cut down is really one of those definitive pieces that help shape the next phase in motorcycle customization. Now in the early 1930s, the AMA created Class C racing. The whole idea, production motorcycles only. Guys had to ride them to the track. You had to buy it at the dealership. It had to be a road model motorcycle. So for the races, stripping these motorcycles down, it's not rocket science. There's no magic formula. Lighten them up, pull off the stuff that breaks, the stuff that hangs off, anything you don't need, get rid of it. So the bikes up here at the museum, quintessential early American racing motorcycles, starting with those RLDRs and WLDR Harleys, Indian Sports Scouts. Uh, the bikes up here are really part of that 1930s, 40s, 50s evolution of custom motorcycles, and it's where a lot of the guys got their inspiration from, these racing bikes. So factory Harley Davidson's set up 
rolling off the assembly line in the 1940s with cut short fenders. Uh, guys would modify them with Flanders style handlebars, pillion pads on the back. This is a buddy, this is not a buddy seat, guys. That's for sliding back and staying out of the wind. Each one of these bikes, they're fit for the racer. Every guy designed his or modified his bike to his own standards, and that's really one of the things that helped drive that custom motorcycle uh, evolution was bikes at the track. So come on over here, we're gonna crank up one of our favorites, 1940s, the Harley-Davidson WLDR and WR was dominant on the racetracks. 45 cubic inches, three-speed transmissions, you know, national champions, Daytona winners. Uh, these bikes helped shape Harley-Davidson and Indian success over the next several years. Uh, the bike in front of us here, 1941 Harley-Davidson WLDR. So. As far as customization goes, this bike would have left the factory probably as a whole street motorcycle. Full fenders, headlights, taillights, as you can see, this one's been modified with the short. You got a, a special racing accessory fender up front, no front brake, tiny little handlebars here that have been uh, specially cut down for racing, Harley-Davidson accessory racing seat. Now these were the high performance big port engines, big side mount Wyco Magneto there, that's from a little bit Bit later example uh, special transmissions with different gear ratios this one's set up brakeless so not only does it have no front brake this is made for the dirt track or modified for the dirt track so brakeless rear wheel uh, custom overlay sprocket there funky little pegs ditch the floorboards base minimum stuff guys this bike was owned by Harry Molinar Harry was a dealer in Hammond Indiana and uh, got a lot of experimental stuff uh, from the Harley factory. Got a lot of Harry's rarest bikes right here at the museum. This one uh, was one that he raced and raced often. Uh, the Stars and Stripes 1941 WLDR. So hopefully a couple kicks. You guys will hear this thing make some incredible noise. Oh yeah. That thing is so cammed up when it's idle and it drops a cylinder. So motorcycle customization, a lot more than just the look. It's how it runs. The insides of these engines have been so heavily modified, uh, far different than street use. So uh, racing stuff though, guys, has always been the inspiration for the next phase of motorcycling in general. Uh, it wouldn't take long for that look and feel to gravitate over to the street bikes of the very same day. So by the mid and late 1930s, bikes are looking much more modern as far as today's standards go. You know, big full fenders, a bulkier look, crash guards, saddlebags, big buddy seats, all sorts of extras. It's actually, this era right here is right about where the term garbage wagon came from stuff stacked all over it. The bikes actually started to lose part of that personality and feel that attracted these riders to the motorcycling in the very first place. So that's exactly why we decided to build this bike, the 1937 Harley Knucklehead Bobber for our annual raffle this year. So quintessential American classic, the Harley Davidson Knucklehead engine. It's what made motorcycling what it is today. And it's all wrapped in with this style uh, that was really one of those pivotal periods in custom motorcycling altogether. So we built this bike from the ground up right here at Wheels Through Time, uh, starting with a 1937 genuine Harley Davidson knucklehead engine that I actually got from American picker Mike Wolf. Uh, Mike sold us the engine and the transmission and we went straight to restoring uh, this bike to give away in 2023. So like we said, guys, that perfect bobber look, this is exactly like combination between period racing stuff uh, and the most iconic and snazzy street bikes of the era. So 
tons of accessories, tons of period personality. So we've got the custom silver paint job uh, with the Bob short fenders. This is exactly like guys used to do it back in the day. Retain that 37 striping, uh, gold and silver leaf. We got the Flanders style handlebars and accessory risers, Crocker tail light from the 1930s. This is like the perfect combination, guys, of what Harley was producing at the time, coupled with some really rad period aftermarket parts, all wrapped into a style that really helped shape custom motorcycling uh, over the next several years. So they always say the knucklehead is the grandfather of the American motorcycle. This bike is a lot more like your cool uncle. It runs absolutely perfect. Couple prime kicks, turn the key on, one to go. nineteen thirties American motorcycle muscle at its best. By the 1950s, the motorcycles on the road really resemble what's being produced today. Glide forks, 16 inch wheels, windshields are common, saddlebags on everything. So the idea of customizing motorcycles would kind of evolve from its predecessors. Now you've kind of got that standard formula by Harley Davidson in Indian, uh, run down the road at a higher rate of travel, you got better suspension, beefier motorcycles altogether. So the idea, while they're still stripped them down it became make the motorcycle look your own this one here 1949 panhead bobber it's one of our favorites got that iconic look from the 1950s uh, that really guys gave the panhead uh, that that kind of fame that it has today so what we've got you know special this has got to be one of the earliest flame paint jobs out there period completely primitive flame style wrapped on a, a standard three and a half gallon tank with a flying ball decal a speed ball uh, emblem excuse me uh, but what they're doing here is they're making a combination of period accessory parts by the manufacturers period aftermarket parts uh, by aftermarket parts suppliers, and then custom stuff that they're doing on their own, whether uh, motorcycle or automotive related or completely out of left field. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and do this to my bike, weld this thing on, who knows? So you guys got, got the Hudson uh, wheel covers, ultra cool setup, uh, the Chattanooga twin stack special exhaust with the cowbell tips. These things make some incredible noise. We're gonna fire this up in just a second. Uh, still retain a lot of that Harley Davidson uh, period equipment. Like, you know, you got your uh, sergeant stripes over there on the rear fender, uh, Harley Davidson, or maybe these are aftermarket trim rails. Ultra cool Hellings and Stellings risers on the handlebars. Stuff like gentleman's choke. All right, this was a period uh, choke setup. They would actually actuate your choke lever without having to get down by the engine there. It's hot, sometimes it's greasy, grimy. Uh, right here you do it all on top. Uh, special shift levers. This thing's got a dang radiator cap for a left gas cap. Model A spare tire covers for the front fender, little custom mud flaps. This thing has all sorts of personality, all sorts of attitude. Uh, over on the other side, you've got this crazy, never seen another one like it, this crazy primary cover. It's a Harley primary cover that covers your front drive there, but this whole front section has been modified, uh, I assume, by the, the guy that put the style into this bike in the first place. So never seen another one like it. A uh, really cool piece that helps make this bike what it is and give it the attitude that it sports today. So we're going to crank this thing up. you got to hear these pipes. One of my favorite period aftermarket pieces. Uh, these were made by a company in Chattanooga uh, called Stories. And the, the pipes were called Stories, Twin Stacks, Chattanooga Scramblers. They've got all sorts of custom names uh, or, or special nicknames. They make a sound like no other. Not quiet to say the least, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and 
fire this bad boy up. 74 cubic inches. This one's been stroked out and actually makes uh, quite a bit of power. Runs down the road 90, 100 mile an hour all day. Man, you can imagine rolling into town on a bike like that. Everybody knows you're coming. So much period cool, but at the same time still retaining a lot of that look and feel that Harley Davidson produced uh, during that time. Which brings us to the next phase is the chopper era. You know, at this time, bikes are so far removed from what manufacturers are producing at the time, it's almost unrecognizable. You've got this big leap away from functionality uh, to almost an impractical level you know starting in the earliest days it's about necessity it's about you know handling performance as you move on into the 50s it kind of becomes more about personality and individuality and then when you get into that chopper era in the 70s it's almost like competition you know you got that whole uh, show scene started to evolve in the 60s and 70s and 80s uh, guys are doing this sort of thing almost to compete against each other outdo the next guy so that's really brought us even to where we're at today in the motorcycle scene uh, custom motorcycles you know the shows today you got easy rider show you got shows at every big event and guys are bringing in their custom stuff really to outdo the next guy and show everybody exactly the sort of things that they can do with their hands and with their with their heads uh, so leads us to the Indian chopper I built this bike for a show in 2014 uh, found the frame and you guys might have caught up with the video that we did on this one about a month ago found the frame and started the build from there so my idea was to create kind of this period uh, personalized motorcycle just as the guys would have done it back in the 70s so tons of period molding uh skinny little front ends big tall 21 inch front wheel crazy exhaust that is way more work to put together than i'd ever want to recommend polished and chromed out to the max uh bright shiny paint jobs silver leaf uh crazy pin striping this is a, it really took so much effort to build the bike uh the way that it sits today which is really you know the amount of effort that guys are putting into custom motors cycles today is staggering. Uh, the amount of creativity and the level of skill that you see uh, on a regular basis now, I don't think anybody really envisioned where it would come to or where it would evolve to uh, today. You know, you guys got shows like uh, the Born Free show, shows like Mama Tried, uh, the One Show out west. I mean, these guys are putting in huge amounts of efforts and doing stuff that has never been done on motorcycles to date by manufacturers or other custom builders. So uh, really proud uh, to see where it's all evolved to. Um, and it was a ton of fun to build this thing. Uh, we didn't hold a candle against the other guys at the show, uh, but it was still a ton of fun to do kind of a step out of my wheelhouse. So we may as well crank it up so you guys can hear this thing make some noise. Uh, 1942 Indian Chief Chopper. It's got compression, that's for sure. All right, here we go. Fingers crossed. Make some noise.
Thanks for tuning in, guys. Remember, you can win this iconic piece of American motorcycle history. The drawing's coming up fast. I'm gonna be sad to see it go, but one of you guys is gonna take it home. <laughs>